Oh. Alright, so let's see what we can do with some of the ideas that we've already explored with the central limit theorem. Um, in the previous discussion we talked um, a bit about how we could have a sample of, of weights of men. Um, I think we had a, f a group of 40 men and their weights and we sampled them in si uh, sample sizes of 10. Each sample gives us a pretty good um, estimation of what the population um, of the population weight is, the population mean. So we're making a distinction between a sample mean and um, a population mean. And if you were to continue to take samples and put them in a histogram, you'd get the distribution of the samples. So that's a sampling distribution. What the central limit theorem says um, is, is that you should look for um, each of those samples of a particular size once they're placed in a histogram to result in a normal distribution. So let's look at um, how we might do something with this. Um, the mean weight for a population of men is 172 pounds with a standard deviation of 29 pounds. So that's really not too, uh, too far off from what we saw um, with the data the 40 men in the, in the previous um, video discussion. So um, 172 pounds, standard deviation of 29. What we know from the empirical rule is that this is a normal distribution. You can expect maybe 68% of men to have a weight that's somewhere in between, um, let's say 172 minus 29 and plus 29. So minus 29, let's say that that's uh, 143. Plus 29, let's say that that's 191. So that's kind of the range where 68% of men are going to reside. That's how we can use this standard deviation. So the problem that we want to look at here is what happens with a ferry boat. A ferry boat that takes a group of men or individuals to work, let's say from the island to the city, and this, 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 ferry, this ferry boat is small and it, it can hold 20, and right? it can hold 20 individuals, and it can hold exactly 20. So if the average weight of a man, and if this is, we're looking at men in this case, if the average weight is 172, then 20 times 72 is 3,440. So 3,440 um, is what we're looking at. Um, so that's kind of, that's what you would expect at any given time if you were to take 20 men, sample those individuals or take them off and measure their weight, you'd expect um, the total weight for those 20 to be 3440. Now, part of the reality here is that um, there's variation, right? Every time we take a sample, there's variation and the mean of all of those samples, if we were to take sample one, call it x bar one, sample two, x bar two, each one of these samples being a sample of 20 men, you're going to get not exactly 172 on average. Um, some averages will be less than 172, some will be more, just like what we saw with stat crunch. So every sample won't be exactly the same. Um, so, but what we are interested in is what is that number which would cause this boat to tip over? 
and so if the max is 3,500 that it can carry, 3,500 pounds, 3,500 divided by 20 is 175. So what we really want to watch out for is um, the possibility of having 20 men with an average weight of 175 or greater. Right, so there is natural variation in the weights of 20 men, um, and and when we take these 20 men, sometimes it'll be 3,500, 3,460, 3,300, 3,490. It could be 3,440 plus or minus some range of values on every sample of 20 men. Um, you can expect some variation. No two samples of size 20 are likely to have the exact same mean. Um, of 172 pounds, not likely. So that's the real thing that we're the real value we're interested in. If the capacity of the ferry is 3,500, um, is the ferry likely to have its capacity exceeded, or what's the probability of that occurring? So that's what this question here is asking. What's the probability that we could take a sample of 20 men? Um, and, and find that their average weight is greater than 175. That's the value at which we can expect problems. Um, so um, the sample mean, um, what we've looked at before is that when you take samples and get their averages, they give us a pretty good approximation to um, the actual population mean. Um, so this is what led us into this idea of the central limit theorem. We went through some of these steps in the previous discussion. What the central limit theorem says is that regardless of what our population looks like, um, we can expect um, the samples, sample one, sample two, sample three, um, if you were to put our samples into a histogram, you can expect it to be a Gaussian or a bell curve or a normal distribution, um, and we can expect that to spread around the mean, which is going to be the same tends to be the same as the population mean, um, but we also can expect the spread to be equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's what makes the central limit theorem so um, incredibly powerful. If I take a sample, I know with some confidence and some qualifying, uh, some other additional qualifying parameters, but but what we know, in general, is that that sample is part of a family that exists within a normal or Gaussian distribution. Um, so because we know what distribution our sample comes from because of the central limit theorem, right? We know what that what that curve looks like. That helps us to do some statistics. Um, if I can get um, a particular value from a sample, whatever that value is, knowing that it's a normal distribution, I can answer the question of, well, the, if we know exactly what the curve looks like and we have a value, some particular um, value, let's say that this is 172, and let's say that I end up um, wanting to answer this question, what's the probability that um, my men or this group of men could have a, a value, a weight, an average value of 175 or higher. Well, I just need to know the area underneath that curve to the
the right of 175. That's the power of the central limit theorem. We know the curve, we can figure out the area. And StatCrunch was able to, to help us um, support this idea. So take a look at that video again. Um, so as the sample size increases, the more likely it is that we're going to um, fit into this family uh, or this histogram of samples where we end up with a normal distribution. Um, and that curve um, will have its mean centered at the population mean and that curve will have its standard deviation um, derived from or related to the population standard deviation but it's going to have less of a spread um, than the population um, standard deviation. So, um, but if the population is normal, if the population is normal, that's given. Once you know and you're given a, a, the name of the distribution, um, you can then use either math or your calculator to figure out area and proportions associated with it. So if the population is normal and the mean is 172 and the standard deviation is 29, we can right away draw the curve and we know what the mean is and this standard deviation um, will give us you know everything those three two piece, three pieces of information it's normal the mean the standard deviation we can draw a curve right away from that now that we know the curve um, we can answer questions such as this what's the probability of selecting one individual whose weight is greater than 175 um, and since the mean is 172 it makes sense that you would have um, quite a few that could be over by a few pounds and quite a few that could be less than um, for the population so notice that in this here I'm looking at one particular individual so the random event is my selecting one individual's name out of a hat and finding that individual um, and, and determining that that individual has a weight that's greater than 175. So what proportion of our curve has individuals with weight greater than 175? That's one way to look at P. What percentage or what proportion of individuals? Um, and, and thirdly, another way is what's the probability? All of those are saying and asking the same question. It's the probability of having an individual, selecting an individual whose weight is greater than 175. So that works just fine if the population is normal. Now, this is where the central limit theorem is applied. Um, what's the probability of selecting 20, not one individual, but 20 individuals and finding that their average is greater than 175? Um, so in this case, regardless, we're not, you know, regardless of whether or not the initial population was normal, the central limit theorem gives us some guarantees with some cl some um, qualifications that um, that those men those samples would all fit into a histogram. So when we're looking at asking and answering this question, what's the probability of X bar or this sample having an average weight greater than 175? What proportion of the area? Um, is on the other side of that value 175 and so on one hand 175 may exist 
on a curve of the population. On the other hand, the curve for um, the samples is much more narrow because each sample, as you go through this, they're going to all be a lot closer to the population value. So you may have extremes in, in your sample, but those two extremes of highs and lows cancel each other out. So the distribution, uh, the, the distribution is going to be uh, much more narrow. And in fact, we know that it's spread around the mean is going to be the population value divided by the square root of the sample size. Um, and so when we want to determine what the area is that corresponds to values or the mean, getting a mean greater than 175, um, we can use normal CDF to get the area. And the left bound is 175 on that area, on that curve, and the right bound um, is out to infinity, so 999, 999. And then to fix the curve, to set the curve for this particular problem, the mean um, is the same as the population mean, and the standard deviation is the standard deviation um, that we see here of sigma over the square root of 20. Um, so visually, we can see that there's going to be a much smaller area. Um, and so between the two on one hand, we're looking at 46%, um, the probability of selecting 20 men and finding a value greater than 175 um, is, when you punch this into your calculator under normal CDF, you'll get um, about 32%. So that's a that's not a small number. The probability of selecting 20 men and getting an average weight greater than 175 could easily happen. So um, there is the risk of the ferry capsizing. So the capacity of the boat, 3,500 pounds, um, but the probability of having an average weight 175 or greater is 32%. And at 175, we're looking at um, the boat capsizing. So we have we stand um, to encounter some real problems with a probability uh, of 32 percent. Let's look at another example. So ACT scores. Um, ACT scores um, happen to follow a normal distribution. And for this normal distribution, they have a mean score of 20.9 and um, a standard deviation of 4.8. What that tells you is that you know most students are somewhere between um, 20.9, so call it 21, 21 plus 5, 21 minus 5. That's where 70% or 68% is what the empirical rule says reside. So 20.9 plus or minus one standard deviation. And 95% sit within two standard deviations. So 20.9 plus 9.6, 20.9 minus. Um, so this question asks, what's the probability that a class where you're looking at 20 individuals have a composite score greater than 24. Um, so anytime we're talking about a popular a sample, a number of individuals, and we're looking at probabilities related to those individuals, look to use the central limit theorem. So um, one individual having a score greater than 24, um, we could figure out what that value is. So if we're looking at um, ACT scores with this distribution, and if we're only interested, let's pretend that this bar is not there. We just want to know what's the probability of one individual having um, 
getting a score greater than 24 or, or at least putting all the names in the hat and selecting one individual whose score is greater than 24 then because we were told it's normal we therefore know the, know the distribution and we can use normal CDF and um, greater than 24 so on the low end 24 on the upper end it's infinity and it's a mean of 20.9 and a standard deviation of 4.8 so there is a reasonably good chance you can find someone that you would end up selecting someone um, if you have all of these names in a hat with a score um, uh, of 24 or greater um, but this question says how about a class where they all average at least 24. Um, so that curve is a different curve. Um, there's less variation. And so where it changes is in the standard deviation. So that's going to be divided by the square root of the number of individuals. This was 20. that is going to be highly improbable. It's, it's less than um, half a percent. So call it 0.2 percent chance. So that's, that would be suspicious. That would, um, that would be a red flag. It's highly improbable that you could get 24 individuals and have a score that's 24, an average score of 24 or more.